everyone, it's Madeline, and this video is about five things you should know before going to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. If you stick around to the end, we're going to discuss a few things we wish we had known before we went. The first thing you should know is that this is a fantastic park for wildlife. There are plenty of bison, horses, and prairie dogs to see on your trip. Another thing you should know is that this park has three separate units, so you should keep that in mind when you're planning your visit. We only had one day at this park, so we explored the south unit. We'll have to make another trip back to see the other areas of the park. The third thing you should know is that Medora is a great little town right outside the south unit of the park. It's full of history, complete with a cowboy museum and a theater where they do shows about Teddy Roosevelt. The fourth thing you should know about North Dakota's only national park is that it is a great spot for some wide open spaces. In fact, that is what Teddy Roosevelt loved about this area so much. There are plenty of opportunities to get out and hike around. Make sure you bring your camera so you can snap some awesome panorama shots. The final thing you should know is that you should brush up on some history before you go. The history of the area and knowing a little bit about Teddy Roosevelt will only make your trip more enjoyable. What you learn beforehand will only enhance your visit while you're there. So we told you at the start of the video we'd talk about some things we wish we knew before we went. So here's a little bit of our self Q&A. The park is located in a pretty remote area, so where should you stay? So this is one of the things that we struggled with because there's not a lot of hotel options around the park. There's a couple chain hotels in Medora, but we were actually coming from Billings and we ended up staying in Fargo. So we had a long day of driving. And since we were there in the summer, it was a long day of daylight, but we really didn't get to spend as much time in the park as we really wanted to. And so that was kind of one of the things that, um, you know, we left a little bit to come back to. And so if I had to do it again, um, I might consider staying in Bismarck um, or there's another town not too far from Medora. It's a little smaller called Dickinson. And those are probably your best bets for where you're going to find lodging. And you're still going to have to have a little bit of a drive before you get to the park. Now, if you have an RV, as we've said in the past, you know, an RV is a game changer. So you know where you're staying when you have an RV. So you probably don't need to be listening to this advice. But um, I think that um, if you're going to do the park in just one day, it becomes difficult because first off, when you're passing through that area, where are you passing through to? Because we drove from Montana to Fargo in uh, Billings, Montana to Fargo in one day. It was a long drive. It was a long day. And we've said this before and we'll probably say it again in future videos. Staying outside of national parks is always kind of a difficult thing. You have to make sure you do your research and plan around that because, um, and far in advance, because they do tend to book up quickly. And they can get really pricey. And, and you know, we don't mind spending money on a hotel when it's a nice hotel, but these hotels tend to get really pricey for- Just regular old Regular hotels. roadside <laughs> motels. Uh, we're talking over 200 bucks a night. And so um, we think that, you know, this is one of those parks, if you want to spend multiple days in, you got to figure out whether or not you can camp there. If you're familiar with camping, you might have to bite the bullet and spend more money to stay in Medora. Or if you're going to do a passing through, uh, if you're coming from the west, staying in Bismarck is a decent option. If you're heading west from the east, um, there's, I mean, it's like a four hour drive to Billings. So there's, there's almost nothing. Yeah. We had a long day of driving and then, um, we did get some great park time, but we did leave some things on the table that, um, we would definitely like to go back to. Okay. What didn't you do in the park that you wish you had? So this is one of those things that I saw and it was kind of one of those we're going to do this park in one day. And the weird part about this park, and you'll see this sometimes, is that it's not contiguous. So there's multiple areas of the park that are separated by farmland or whatever. And so there's a northern uh, part of this park, and I think it's about an hour drive. And also, 
in that same direction is where Teddy Roosevelt built his cabin. And which is, he had the cabin out there. He loved this area. He loved how remote it was. And I really would have wanted to go to that cabin. And in fact, if I had planned a little better, we could have done it. But not really knowing the area and being familiar with it, um, that's something that we didn't do. And it will be first thing on my list um, next time we're back in that area. That said, I don't know how often we're going to get to the west side of North Dakota. Um, But um, it really is a beautiful area. And so that was something I'm looking forward to doing next time we go back. Yes, that's where planning really comes into play because we were like, oh, we'll just sometimes sometimes we do a lot of research. Sometimes we don't do as much. And we knew we were going to be driving through this area and we wanted to stop in at this park. And um, we really missed out on on seeing the other half of it. So I definitely in the future, sometime when we find ourselves back in North Dakota, we want to go explore more because it was a beautiful park. The South unit was absolutely gorgeous with tons of animals and tons of hiking and really vast, wide open spaces. So one of the things that I have to always remind myself of is when we're planning days like this, especially when we're driving, that if something says it takes three hours from you know city to city and you're driving on the interstate, it just add like 25% to that. Because whether you're stopping for gas, stopping for traffic, stopping for construction, there just always seems to be something. And so even when you start looking at these big wide open areas, you're like, okay, you know, it's a three hour and 15 minute trip. Um, it never, it always takes longer. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video and you always stay in the loop. And if you want to see more from Teddy Roosevelt National Park, we have a vlog up on our channel now.